Hello and welcome to this Audio Basics tutorial which we're going to have a look at the issue of sample rate and bit depth and try and explain them a little bit better so you can understand what's going on. Now I'm using Adobe Audition CS6 but any audio software is going to work with sample rates and bit depth because it's digital audio. So this is just an explanation try and help you understand what is sample rate and bit depth and why are they important to the quality of what we produce. Now, the first thing to say is CDs will always play back at 44,100 Hz or 44.1 kHz and at 16 bit bit depth. If you have any other file that's been created at a different sample rate or a different bit depth, you will actually need to convert that to 44,100 Hz 16 bit bit depth before you can actually play it on a CD. MP3s can work other ways and you can have different bit rates and sample depths and what have you but certainly when it comes to CDs you want 44,100 Hz 16 bits but what does this mean 44,100 Hz sample rate well let me give you an example firstly from video if you're in America you work with something called NTSC which is video and NTSC requires to give the illusion of moving images it requires 30 frames, 30 still images a second to be played back. And those 30 still images, when played back over one second, will give the illusion of movement. Okay, so if you like, the visual area is sampled 30 times a second, and then when those 30 samples or images are played back, you get the illusion of moving images. However, to reproduce music or audio effectively, you need to have an awful lot more samples per second and you can see here what it's saying is it's taking 44,100 slices per second through the waveform. Now this is a waveform if I just do that to there to there that's one waveform so from the same point to the same point is one complete cycle. Now if one of these cycles took one second that would be one hertz this particular waveform is a thousand Hertz which means in one second I have a thousand of these taking place okay so a thousand cycles per second that's a thousand Hertz now if I want to accurately sample my thousand Hertz tone and play it back in a way that is good that the ear is going to hear it and recognize it I need to sample it at at this particular point 44,100 cycles a second so I have a thousand Hertz so a thousand cycles per second but my sampling is 44,100 samples a second which means that each one of these waveforms from this point to this point is going to be sampled 44.1 times so it's going to be cut through 44.1 times and that's going to give me a good reflection of how it sounds and in fact if I zoom in here you can begin to see these individual dots and if we go through and you'll find that it would be 44.1 44.1 samples per waveform or 44,100 samples per second now this is a 1 kilohertz waveform so therefore I've got a thousand of these per second but the human ear hears from 20 Hertz so 20 cycles per second all the way up to 20,000 Hertz so that's 20,000 cycles per second which is a very high frequency sound generally speaking young children can hear 20 kilohertz older people like me it's been reduced and you're not going to hear up to that high but even so we have fairly high frequency hearing now at a thousand cycles per second I've got 44.1 cuts through this but if I'm at 20 kilohertz, so I've got a waveform, so these are 20,000 of these per second, rather than 1,000 per second, I'd have 20,000. This would be cut down to 2.1. So let's just create a waveform and show you. So I'm just going to click right there, and I'm going to generate a 20 kilohertz waveform now. So I'm going to go to Effect, Generate Tone, and I'm going to go to this one here and let's take it up to minus 20 dB and that's uh, let's make it 20,000 and click OK and so now I have I'll zoom out a bit a 20 kilohertz tone 
So let me just pull this around so we can see a 20 kilohertz tone. Now if I start to zoom in on this one and we look at a cycle, so from here to here, so from say this point, in fact it's hard to get it, but that's roughly about a cycle, I've kind of got two samples. So when I was at 1 kilohertz, I had 44.1 samples per cycle. But here, and it's very difficult actually to get it to, to snap to particular points because we're quite zoomed in, you can see that I'm getting just over two samples per part of my waveform, which means at high frequencies, it's not going to be very accurate. I'm going to have very few samples for very high frequencies. So if you have got something that's got lots of sibilance, so that's the Sing the T's, something that's got lots of high frequency noise to it, something like cymbals, some music that's got some very high frequency notes to it, anything that requires high frequency and you need it accurately played back to get a very good feel for how the music was, you wouldn't record it in 44,100. So if I go to File, New, audio file, you'll see that I've got a sample right here of 44,100, but if I click the drop down, I can go all the way up to 192,000 samples per second. And if I click 192,000 samples per second and we'll click OK, it's got a new audio file and I'll have to go back and generate that 20 kilohertz, there you go, 20 kilohertz tone again, and I'll have to zoom right in on that. Now we can see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 samples for a 20 kilohertz tone rather than the previous one which just gave us two samples. So it means that when it's played back it's going to be an awful lot more accurate. The disadvantage of course is that it's going to require more computing power. But at least I've got lots of samples and each one of those samples is going to give me a cut through what the audio is doing at that point and it's going to be able to say, well, here you are, I've got these however many samples of the waveform, and I'm going to be playing back a much more accurate result. So this was it, the previous one, two samples, and this is the new one with lots of samples. That's going to be much more accurate. So when you record, you start off by recording at as high a sample rate as your computer can really cope with, particularly when high frequency is required as part of the recording. This sort of level of 192,000 kilohertz is fairly high and unusual to use, but I have seen lots of people who do tend to record at using 96 kilohertz. So you'll see here you've got 96 kilohertz. That's been a standard for a long time, and that's going to give you a lot more samples for each of the waveform than you would do, say, at 44.1. What you do for your final output is you have to compress it down to 44.1 to be able to play on a CD. But if you have recorded it at a higher sample rate to start off with, when it is resampled at a lower sample rate to play back on a CD, you're going to start from a much more accurate position. So rather than starting with two samples for the high frequency waveform, and then resampling it, which is going to give you a slight inaccuracy afterwards, you can start off with something that's highly accurate, so that when it is resampled at a lower sample rate, it will be resampling something that was very accurate to start with, and so the chances of it sounding great are still high. Okay, so that's sample rate. In the next tutorial, I'm going to have a very brief chat about bit depth. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for listening.